Diego, I'd love to ask you a very similar question. Since we've talked about the regulatory classification of tokens and if they're regulated investments or not, who needs to consider this question? And is this something that the artist or the issuer needs to worry about when they use a marketplace? Thanks, Frankie. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think um, I'm, I'm absolutely with, with Rudolf or, or on this one. It is um, the case, certainly in the UK, and so far I'm aware in, in Singapore and, and in other jurisdictions that uh, generally the test that, that Rudolf has set out applies with nuances, but, but it, broadly that outcome is, is, is probably the, the case in, in most jurisdictions and, and certainly in the UK. Um, however, that is only the first step when you're thinking about regulatory licensing and prohibitions. And, and I'm going to go a little bit into the weeds around how financial services regulation works, because generally it is not enough to have a security to trigger certain things. It is, it is all about what you do with the security that will make you fall within the regulatory perimeter, as we call it, or not. And if you are within the perimeter, then there is an obligation to be licensed or registered or whatever it is that you or, or to rely on an exemption or exclusion or whatever it is that the, the local framework um, asks you to. And, and then depending on the local jurisdiction, if you haven't done that, if you haven't sought the registration or the licensing, you are in breach and that may amount to a criminal offense. And that may have then consequences for transactions that you are then entering into because they may be invalidated as a result of the, the breach. So that is generally how financial services perimeters work. And so the first question is, what is it that we're dealing with? And that question can be answered on the basis of Rudolph's test um, broadly. Is this a security or not? And in the jurisdiction where it is a security, then the next question is, right, what is the activity that we're performing here? And is this activity a regulated activity that requires me to be licensed in order to carry it out? Or is it something that I can just do because there is an exemption or because it's simply not regulated at all? Um, and so the question really needs to be considered by everybody in the chain and th their particular characteristics and their particular position in respect of the NFT will be, again, very fact specific. Um, but let's start with the, with the artist, the artist that is issuing the artwork, um, that is creating the artwork. They may not be minting the NFT. They may, you know, work with somebody who is minting the NFT for them, in which case, the artist is entirely outside the scope. Now, the question is around, is the minting of the NFT equal to the creation of a security? Because if that is the case, then it may be that in certain jurisdictions, issuing the security is something that is regulated. Now, in the UK and generally in Europe, issuers of traditional securities, like shares or bonds, are not within the licensing framework. It is the intermediation of securities that causes an issue. There is a caveat to that, which I'm going to get to in a second. But generally speaking, a you know company or um, could issue a debt security, for example, and that doesn't trigger licensing requirements. It is the selling of the security that will you know bring you within the scope of the perimeter. And so um, that test needs to be applied in the context of the jurisdiction and in the context of the classification that we've got. So um, assuming that the NFT is is a security in those cases where it is, then is the, the person who's minting the security on the hook merely by minting it? That's the first question. Probably the answer is, is not. But then the question is, is the next person in the chain, and that would be the exchange potentially, or somebody else who is offering that security to people so that they can buy it, is that activity regulated? And generally speaking, the intermediation of securities, the selling of securities, either because you've bought them and are reselling them, or because just finding people to come together so that they can buy it will trigger a licensing requirement. And so it's, it's really, you need to really look at what is everybody doing and at what stage are we within the scope. Now, if you've got a very entrepreneurial artist that is minting the NFT and you know, sets up their website to start and start selling them, then we may be in that territory because, you know, if they're offering them directly, 
then we may be in that territory. Um, the big caveat is that where the NFT is not a security, but is subject to some local crypto regime, then it is necessary to consider that question under the applicable local crypto regime. And so, for example, in the UK, the intermediation of securities is the same test. The intermediation of crypto assets will bring you within the registration framework under the, um, the money laundering regulations that we've got here in the UK. Um, and that is a result of um, essentially the UK's implementation of the, of the guidance that was issued by the Financial Action Task Force, which is an in international global standard setting body that has created a definition for when crypto assets may be a risk to money laundering and you know may 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 be furthering um terrorist financing etc and so countries have put in place regimes in order to deal with that and in the uk that means that <clears throat> if you've got a crypto asset that that is within the scope then the in the issuance because you're transferring it um may be an activity that triggers registration as well as the intermediation. So you're actually very caught at the very early stages of the of the regime. And that is because of the UK's perception of how crypto assets need to be regulated at, at least at the moment. Um, now, whether in the UK a crypto asset, an NFT qualifies as a crypto asset, um, that is a slightly different question. We come back to the test that Rudolf was setting out. Um, and it's actually really, really dependent on the specific features of the of the crypto asset. The, the test here is whether the whether the NFT represents value or contractual rights. Um, and we've seen good arguments to support the position that a crypto asset, uh, which is an NFT, which is gaining its value as a result of the art, and really people are paying for the art, not for the NFT. Then that that is the value that's attached to the art, not. To the NFT, and you know, to the extent that the that the smart contract that's pegged to the NFT is not a real contractual right, but really just um, you know the the execution of something, then the NFT may be outside the scope of the perimeter. But it really depends on how it's been done, how it's been minted, and what the underlying rights are that are being sold by the NFT. I think one thing that people tend to forget in the context of NFTs. Uh, is that not every NFT is the same thing. NFT is just a way of of creating a non-fungible thing of something. But we really need to think about what is it that we're selling? You know, is it a, a licensing right to something? Is it really the art, the, the right to the artwork? Is it, you know, what is it that we've got here? And does that mean that it would fall within the perimeter? 